This is Doug Brunk reporting from a psychopharmacology conference sponsored by the Nevada Psychiatric Association in Las Vegas. Comorbid chronic pain and substance abuse are thought to be highly prevalent, but researchers are trying to better understand the magnitude of the problem. Well, what we probably know is that the numbers that we have are uh, an underrepresentation and underreporting. We know that uh, based on the recent Institute of Medicine report on pain that about 116 million Americans suffer from pain in this country. And we've got some data that suggests that perhaps 10% or so of patients with chronic pain have a co-occurring addictive disorder. And so if you take now the flip side of that and you look at the numbers of patients who show up, the millions of patients that show up with a primary addictive disorder, you see actually a higher percentage of patients who have chronic pain. Typically about 30 to 60 percent of those will have chronic pain. So we believe that this is a real problem, this co-occurrence, and that these patients in particular tend to be extremely challenging to take care of. The data that we do have suggests that they cost 10 times more to care for than an average patient and more than three times more than a patient with chronic addiction. The one take home message is we need da better data to actually figure out uh, just how big this problem is to do something about it. First thing is to develop a solid differential diagnosis for your patients. Secondly is to identify any psychiatric comorbidities that may need to be addressed with that. Next, if you decide that you're going to prescribe opioids, make sure that you give appropriate informed consent and good education for the patients about what the expectations are for this trial. And I mentioned trial, uh, and I want to emphasize that because it should be made clear to the patient that there is no guarantee that this is going to be anything other than a short period of time to see if there's improvement. To then document and reassess and redocument the benefits of these medications. And uh, Steve Pasek, who is a psychiatrist out of uh, New York, now at Vanderbilt, came up with this idea of the four A's, which uh, suggests that doctors document their activities of daily living, the degree of analgesia that a patient gets, the uh, occurrence of any side effects or adverse effects, and then any aberrant behaviors. Document those four A's. Use that as a guide as to whether you should go up on the medications, hold steady, or come down. And then to use a number of risk mitigation strategies, including uh, your own state's uh, prescription monitoring programs, which I encourage everybody to avail themselves of, uh, appropriate urine drug testing and random screening for patients who are on uh, opioids, uh, and then also utilizing information sources such as uh, family uh, and spouses to assess are the patients really using these medications appropriately and are they really improving their overall physical functioning and quality of life.